All right, going to show you some very interesting clips here of Steven Anderson showing uh, his supposed qualifications of being a pastor of the church and just showing how we got Steven Anderson versus 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, which lists the qualifications for a bishop. So I'm going to show us some clips here just displaying the kind of behavior Anderson does in his sermons and the, sort of the assortment of conduct that he puts on and comparing it to the scriptures on the qualifications for a bishop. Because remember, you're supposed to have a pastor, a bishop, or you can call him pastor, overseer, whatever. But you're supposed to have a pastor according to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, and Titus chapter uh, 1, verse 5 to 9, I believe it is. That meets those qualifications. And we're going to see here if Anderson meets these qualifications. So here's the first clip where Anderson is going on this, this rant, this, this screaming rant, about how uh, basically people aren't calling him pastor and how just they're just calling him Steve and everything else. And you'll see this kind of too, they, they, they take this title of pastor as some kind of reverence uh, like, like it's some kind of like ominous title or whatever it's just simply the description of your position in the church it's not some kind of you know like what the catholic priest will do but just watch what anderson does check this out we live in a time where where young people are cocky arrogant mouthy i mean i've been in the store and you have too and see kids mouth off to their parents be disrespectful call them names you know and it kind of reminds me of you know a week ago i stood up and said my name's pastor anderson not Steve, you know, but yet people have chosen to continue calling me Steve because they're either arrogant, prideful, childish, juvenile, you know, or they just have no respect for being an elder. Well, maybe they're probably never going to be a bishop or elder themselves until they grow up and learn to be a follower because you can't be a leader until you learn how to follow. And so if you're going to be a pastor of a church, you get sent out of the local church. And you get sent out of the local church where you call the man of God pastor. Everybody understand that? Am I making myself clear? Because I'm sick and tired of standing up here and rattling my cage about the same thing because people don't get it. Yeah, I mean, he, he gets that upset over someone just not calling him pastor and just calling him by his name, Steve. I mean, talk about just someone who's a child. I mean, Sam Keep is right. He's essentially a 12 year old in an in a adult body. I think he's in his 40s. He's basically a 12-year-old in a 40-year-old body when you get down to it. Now, check out this next clip where, once again, Anderson is screaming at his congregation. And this time, he's ranting about how, I'm the man of God here. I run this church. You know, you do what I say, that kind of stuff. Check this out. The guy goes nuts. Watch this. Amen. This church is not a free-for-all. This isn't an open mic. This isn't a karaoke bar. Right. Okay? I'm the man of God here. I meet the qualifications. I run this church. And if you don't like it, then get out. Yeah, that was a pretty uh, horrific display we saw there. But now let's go to the scriptures and look at the qualifications for an overseer. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 down to verse 7. This is a true saying, if a man desired the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Uh, for if a man know not, uh, sorry, if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he then take? How shall how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, that lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Now, a couple of things I want to unpack here. Notice, one of the qualifications is good behavior. You know, given to hospitality, uh, no striker, not a brawler, not covetous, but patient. Uh, I don't think we saw that in those clips. I don't think we saw of good behavior as he's screaming about how you got to call me pastor. Don't just call me Steve. And, you know, I'm the man of God here. I run this church. I thought Jesus Christ was the the leader and, and head of the church. But no, apparently it's the local pastor, apparently, according to Anderson in this clip. You got also one that ruled, ruled well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. I think we uh, saw a violation of that as his oldest sons were sending these really perverted messages over this uh, group chat that the, the members of the church were involved in. Uh, run that run that rules well his own house. Uh, lest being lifted up with pride. We, I think we saw that in those two clips. So I think it's safe to assume that Anderson uh, verse, uh, in the battle between Anderson versus 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, Anderson lost. You know, is that simple. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Uh, these, these are the qualifications for a bishop, and Anderson fails to meet several of them. So, and anyway, we wanted to show you guys that. Don't be deceived by Anderson's cult. 
Uh, they are, uh, I, I believe, in new, a kind of, some kind of style, like the Westboro type uh, system, like the Westboro Baptist Church, I'll put it that way, to demonize anyone who believes in the King James Bible as God's perfect word in English. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.